Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's recap, we will be looking at an anime titled Shichisei no Subaru. In this anime, Asahi's death during a game of the popular online role-playing game, Union, also ended her real life. Following Union's dissolution, the Subaru group disbanded. Six years after the events, Haruto returns to the modernized Rei Union to reconnect with Asahi, who has already left. The question is if it is genuinely her, or just a digital representation. In search of answers, the once comrades reunite and start into the enigmatic and deadly virtual world. I'm sure that at this point you will want to know how everything plays out, right? Then. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Union is a world-renowned online role-playing game where different gamers worldwide connect to the game's server to play and complete missions. The leading party of the game is Subaru, headed by a guy named Haruto Amo. One day, his team takes on the Calamity Monster quest rumored to be very tough in the game. The mere fact that a team is taking on the quest in the game shocks some other players because the top teams of the game won by losing half of their teammates. Another thing is that it is game over for anyone who dies in the quest, because there is no respawn. Haruto, assisted by his second-in-command, Takanori, takes on the monster in their quest alongside their other teammates. One of their teammates, Satsuki, is a wizard called the Queen of Elementals for her command of countless elements. The rest of the team includes an empath, a shapeshifter, and a dream mage. The last person is a girl named Asahi, who possesses a rare ability that allows her to see into the future. In the end, Subaru completes the quest as its members defeat the boss, Calamity. Later that day, Sahi speaks of a new quest called Mystery of Darkness. The quest is rumored to be difficult because the boss is very strong. One of the team members, Clive, thinks otherwise because he feels that his team can defeat the monster. On the other hand, Satsuki analyzes data on the monster and finds out that he is tough to defeat. Her reason is that every party in the game who faced the monster has failed. Haruto, upon hearing this, cheers his team up, saying that they now have a new challenge, which is completing the said quest. Asahi supports him, and because of that, the rest of the team agrees to it. Furthermore, Satsuki hands Haruto a ring as a gift to appreciate him for what he did for her in the past. She seems quite shy while giving her the ring, and Clive easily gets the impression that she wants Haruto. Although she tries to deny the fact, Clive does not seem convinced. Moments later, the team heads out to get supplies they will use for the quest. While at it, Satsuki notices that Asahi and Haruto are missing. Because of that, she heads out to look for them only to find them in the woods talking. Satsuki remains hidden behind a tree trying to listen to what Asahi is telling Haruto. On the other hand, Asahi tells Haruto to make a promise to her, and she agrees by putting a ring on her finger. After the team is done shopping for supplies, they head off to complete the quest. While at it, Clive notices that Satsuki is in a mood. He teases her to find out what's up, but Satsuki walks away from him looking somewhat pissed. While completing the quest, Haruto and his team easily defeat the monsters that come their way, all thanks to a Sahi's prophet art, which allows her to see into the future to make fighting easier for her teammates. Soon, they arrive at the last stage of the quest, where Purgatorio, the boss, dwells. Purgatorio heads out of a portal and displays numerous floating swords behind him. His presence scares Satsuki and her teammate, Nozomi, because he is big and strong. Even at that, Haruto is positive that his team can win, and as such, he leads the attack. In turn, Purgatorio fires countless beam blasts at them, hoping to take them out. A united front is formed on Haruto's side, where each team member combines effort to launch calculated attacks at the enemy. While at it, Asahi gives accurate predictions of where and when to engage or evade. At some point, Haruto orders Nozomi to activate her trump card so that he can attack from above. She agrees and begins summoning a large bird. On the other hand, Satsuki unleashes her elemental powers at Purgatorio, while her teammates launch coordinated attacks on him hoping to pin him down at a spot. They succeed to an extent, making Haruto feel pumped up to land the finishing strike. However, Takanori was against this move and he intended that Haruto charge carefully. In the heat of the moment, the enemy projects some swords at Nozomi, causing Haruto to abandon his attack and save her. While at it, the enemy sends another blade aiming for Haruto's back. The blade succeeds in piercing Haruto, and when he falls to the ground, his promise ring with Asahi falls out of his hand. While he struggles to get up on his feet, the enemy prepares a beam blast for him, hoping to finish him off permanently. Asahi notices this and dives into the blast to save Haruto from dying. However, the downside is that she she dies instantly, leaving her teammates shocked. That evening when Haruto logs out of the game, he sends a text in the group chat saying that he called Asahi, but she did not pick up. Some of his teammates blame him for Asahi's death because he charged at the previous boss. 
One day, they all agree to go console Asahi at her house only to find out that she is dead. According to the police, the cause of her death is as a result of a sudden heart failure, but the game was not the cause. Even at that, news spread that the company running Union was suspending service. At Asahi's funeral, Haruto stands outside under the rain, sad about Asahi's death. When Takanori gets out of the memorial home, he pushes Haruto to the ground, saying that he killed Asahi. Satsuki and Nozomi, who are present at the time, tell Takanori to stop what he is doing. On the other hand, Haruto remains speechless under the rain while sitting on the ground. After six years, Haruto gets a call from his friend, telling him to join his team for a game. He declines the offer, saying that he quit gaming. After the call, he leaves his room and heads off to the sitting room to watch the news. There, his sister offers to make him breakfast, and he agrees. While watching the news, he finds out about a game named Reunion, which is an upgraded version of Union. According to the newscaster, players who do well in the game are given the privilege of becoming an executive candidate for the Pleroma industry and also receive real-world benefits like studying abroad with scholarships. However, the game can only be played by a selected few with a trait called Sense. When the newscaster gets to this part, ignores his breakfast and heads into his bedroom. There, he receives a text from his friend begging him to join his team. Because of how persistent Haruto's friend is, he gives up and logs into the game. After he logs in, he meets up with his friend, Lion, who leads the way to complete a quest. At some point, Haruto takes the lead since Lion has little experience in the game. He freaks out when Haruto senses the presence of monsters and moves backward, leaving Haruto to fight alone. In the end, Haruto easily defeats the monsters, leaving Lion shocked. Beside Lion is a female gamer, Rose, who looks shocked because Haruto is not scared at all. After some seconds, their current location changes form and leads them to a room where a treasure chest lies. Since Haruto is the fighter, he gets persuaded by Rose and Lion to open up the treasure chest. When he gets close to the chest, he activates his shield to prevent any surprises that might risk his life. Unfortunately, he opens up the treasure chest only to find Asahi lying inside. The fact that Asahi is alive in the game shocks Haruto because he watched her die about six years ago. He drowns in disbelief as he sees Asahi full of life standing in front of him. However, his expression makes Asahi wonder why he is acting weird. Haruto then heads out of the dungeon with Asahi and the other gamers he was with. When they get out of the cave, Leon and Rosa heed back to meet their teammates, leaving Haruto alone with Asahi. Haruto thinks that Asahi is an imposter and when he questions her, she denies the fact. His behavior towards her is quite weird, because he is always lively around her. Little does she know that she was mourned and buried in real life. They both enter into a conversation, and at some point, Asahi's presence attracts the attention of other gamers. Because of that, Haruto leads her to the other side of the woods, so he can be alone with her. When they get there, he gets curious and then questions Asahi about where she is logged in from, but she replies saying that she is home in her room like always. She also reveals that she played her last game with Haruto and her other teammates. Haruto, on the other hand, does not look pleased with her answers. To confirm if she is real, he questions her about the current year and she replies giving the wrong answer. When Haruto informs her about the correct year, she checks it for herself and realizes that it is wrong. Another thing is that she does not believe the current date because it's been six years already. Because of that, she assumes that it is a bug and then tries to log out to get rid of it. Unfortunately, when she deploys her menu, she finds out that she cannot log out. Haruto suggests that they contact the operator, and when he does, he finds out that Asahi's account is not registered. Even at that, Asahi asks about her other teammates, but Haruto replies saying that he knows nothing about them. When Asahi insists on knowing what's up, Haruto reveals that she died about six years ago. Asahi, upon hearing this, looks speechless at first, but then laughs because she does not believe that she is dead. Her reason is that she is alive in the game. Soon, a gamer named Leonovich arrives at the scene with his team, surprised about the fact that Asahi is alive. He intends to take Asahi and use her powers to profit his team. However, Haruto stands against him to prevent him from taking Asahi. Although Haruto was powerful in the past, he easily takes damage from Leonovich, who lands an attack on his abdomen. The reason is that Haruto has lost his sense and has now become like a regular gamer. Even at that, Haruto summons his sword ready to go another round with Leonovich. Just before Leonovich attacks him, Asahi sees the future and tells Haruto to duck. As a result, Haruto dodges an attack that Leonovich tries to land on him. Also, the fact that Asahi used her powers makes Haruto want to believe that she is alive. Soon,
Takanori arrives at the scene and easily humiliates Leonovich in front of his team. The public humiliation causes Leonovich to abort his mission and retreat with his men. Takanori looks excited to see Asahi, because he never thought that he would see her again. When he finds out what is going on, he does not freak out, but rather tells Asahi to let him handle the situation. However, he seems quite cold to Haruto because of what happened in the past. Meanwhile, Haruto is shocked by the fact that Takanori believes that Asahi is alive. His reason for being shocked is that Takanori attended Asahi's funeral in real life. The way he speaks to Haruto gives Asahi the impression that they are quarreling. She also declines to follow Takanori since he will not let Haruto join them. In the end, Takanori leaves the scene telling Asahi to call him if she needs his help. After he leaves, Asahi wonders what is wrong with him, but Haruto reveals that a lot has changed in six years. Despite that, she reminds him of the promise they all made as a team about six years ago. Haruto, upon hearing this, emphasizes that the promise ended when the team lost their last quest. He then states that he has not spoken to Takanori and the others in years, adding that Subaru is no longer a thing. Even after hearing this, Asahi proposes that they form their team again. In real life, Satsuki stands at a graveyard and pays respects to Asahi. Later that day, Haruto sits in his room trying to comprehend if Asahi is alive or not. While at it, his sister calls his attention saying that he has a visitor. He heads to the door only to find Satsuki looking like she attained puberty twice. The mere sight of her leaves Haruto speechless for a few seconds, because it's been a while since they saw each other. He then leads the way to his bedroom where they both enter into a conversation about what happened in the past. At some point, Haruto thanks Satsuki for standing up for him because most of his teammates blamed him for Asahi's death. Their conversation leads to the point where Satsuki reveals that she saw Haruto recently in the game. The fact that Satsuki plays reunion is quite shocking to him because he thought she quit game. Gaming. On the other hand, he drops the news about Asahi's presence in the game. Satsuki finds it hard to believe that Asahi is alive, and she questions Haruto about what he did when he found out. He reveals that he left her in the game at one point and logged out. Another thing is that he wants to quit gaming and forget about his past. Satsuki, upon hearing this, becomes pissed because Haruto wishes to forget all the good memories he created with his previous team. Meanwhile, Hatoru's sister prepares drinks to serve Haruto and Satsuki. Before she gets to her brother's bedroom, Satsuki storms out looking upset, and then leaves the house. This alone makes her question her brother about what she said to Satsuki. Later that day, Satsuki logs into the game and sees Asahi walking towards her. Behind her is Haruto, who walks towards Satsuki. When Satsuki sees Asahi, she expresses shock because she thinks she is dead. Meanwhile, Asahi looks happy to see Satsuki, and she hopes that things can go back to normal. Satsuki, on the other hand, brings up a conversation where she questions Asahi if she knows that she is dead. When she brings this up, Haruto tries to calm her down because the questions are too sudden. However, Asahi does not think that she is dead, and she reveals that she recalls defending Haruto in their previous quest. Satsuki, after hearing this, tells Asahi that she is dead because she attended her funeral back in real life. Asahi does not want to believe this information, because she is alive in the game. At some point, Satsuki raises her voice at Asahi, saying that she cannot log out because she does not have a body to return to. Since Asahi claims that she is alive, Satsuki wonders why she did not show up in real life. The way she speaks makes her feel sad because of the mean words she says to her. Along the line, gamers from the Lightning Party surround Haruto, and the others, hoping to capture Asahi for themselves. While Satsuki activates her powers, she warns the gamers to leave, but they still maintain their stance. Because of that, Satsuki rains down her magic on them, and wipes all of them, sparing none. Later that day, the leader of the Lightning Party orders her men to go out and capture Asahi. Seconds later, Takanori arrives at the scene and threatens the leader saying that he will kill her if he goes after Asahi. Because of that, the leader concedes and promises not to go after Asahi anymore. Meanwhile, Takanori wonders how and why the news about Asahi is spreading so fast. A thought that someone might be behind it enters his mind and he wishes to find out who is responsible. Elsewhere, Asahi, Haruto, and Satsuki arrive at their former base where they used to hold guild meetings. There, Asahi expresses shock when she finds out that all her items are gone. In the meantime, Haruto sees the ring that Satsuki gifted him in the past. Satsuki sees the ring and wishes that Haruto would have worn the ring even if he did not have us for it. Minutes later, Satsuki heads to a lower level of the base where a pool of water is present. He stares deeply at his reflection and wonders what he is going to do about Asahi's situation. Amid his thoughts, an empath named Alicia arrives at the scene. Her presence shocks Haruto, and he wonders who she is. There, Alicia reveals that she is not an enemy, but then warns Haruto that people are planning an attack 
against his team from the shadows. She also adds that Haruto should protect Asahi and face his past. After dropping this info, Alicia fades gradually into the shadows, leaving Haruto shocked. Alicia's disappearance makes Haruto wonder who she is and why she gave him such information. Meanwhile, Satsuki converses with Asahi, telling her that she should not confuse Haruto or make her suffer more. Asahi tries to explain the reason why she cannot log out, but Satsuki interrupts her. She calls her a bug, in the game addressing her as a leftover of residual data. The way she says this makes Asahi feel bad, but even at that, she does not hold back. Instead, she reveals that everything has changed in the past six years, with Haruto being the most affected. At this point, Haruto stands in a corner and eavesdrops on their conversation. In the past, at the time when Asahi died, Satsuki noticed that Haruto changed and became emotionless. It was like he lost a part of himself due to Asahi's death. In the present, Satsuki explains this to Asahi, adding that Haruto withdrew within himself while grieving. She then brings up a conversation about Asahi's profit art, saying that she cannot use it because her brain is not giving off electrical signals. Her reason for saying that is because she thinks that Asahi does not have a body in real life. On the other hand, Asahi counters her by saying that she used her profit art recently. She believes that she is very much alive and then tries to prove her point to Satsuki. In the heat of the moment, Haruto heads out of the shadows, yelling that they should keep shut. He looks pissed because they were arguing over how much he has changed, and also the reason he changed. He then admits that he is different, and tells them to leave him alone. After that, he deploys his menu and logs out of the game. The following day, Satsuki heads over to see Haruto at his house. There, she reveals that she does not want to lose to Asahi, but Haruto does not seem to understand what she means. At some point, she reveals her promise ring which makes Haruto get flashbacks of when his former teammates made a promise together in real life. At that time, they all wore matching rings and acknowledged that they were a team both in the game and in real life. In the present, Haruto takes a look at the ring again and gets another flashback. This time, he recalls a time he was with Asahi in the woods before she died. When he snaps out of it, he heads out of his house in a hurry to do something. Satsuki in turn follows after him and finds him at a graveyard searching for something in the ground. There, he finds his ring, which signifies the promise he made with his former teammates. He reflects on the promise which entails that team members of Subaru will be of help to each other in the game and real life. After reflecting on the promise, he reveals that he wants to help Asahi in the game. Satsuki agrees to join him, but before she leaves the graveyard, she notices some fresh flowers on Asahi's grave. The sight of the flowers makes her assume that someone close to Asahi was there recently. It turns out that Takanori is behind the flowers because he was there when Satsuki left. The following day, Haruto joins Asahi to defeat tree monsters in the game. While at it, Asahi winds up falling into a lake because she took the last shot of the tree monsters. She obtains a green gem because of her contribution to killing the tree monsters. Since she is wet, she dries off her clothes, making Haruto feel uncomfortable. Also, because Haruto hears other people passing by the lake, he hugs Asahi to prevent them from seeing her. In the meantime, Satsuki sits at home and stares at a picture of her past teammates. While staring at the picture, she recalls a time in the past when she was trapped by some monsters. At that time, Haruto took it upon himself to fight the monsters and free her from captivity, even though it was quite risky. When Satsuki questioned him about his actions, he replied saying that he will always be her shield, no matter how strong she gets. In the present, Satsuki reflects on the memory while she prepares to log into the game. Back in the game, Asahi pays for a party ring and tries to put it on Haruto's finger. Haruto declines the offer saying that they can make his own later. Before heading out of the blacksmith store, he wears the ring on Asahi's fingers making her feel excited. Later that day, Asahi and Haruto meet up with Satsuki when she logs into the game. There, Satsuki finds out that Asahi and Jaruto were at the blacksmith store before they met her. She sees the ring on Asahi's fingers and gets mixed feelings when she finds out that Haruto was the one who put it on her fingers. Because of that, she goes off to complete a mission and acquire the green gem so she can get the party ring. When she does, she heads back to meet Haruto, expecting that he will put the ring on her finger. Instead, she winds up putting on the ring herself in disappointment. On the other hand, Asahi is excited that two members of the team now have rings. Later that day, they all head down to Purgatorio's lair to find clues about what happened to Asahi. When they get there, Asahi suggests that they reach out to Clive and Nozomi. Satsuki replies saying that she has lost contact with them 
and she is not sure if they are in the game. This alone makes Asahi feel bad as she wonders what happened to her teammates. They used to be close in the past, but Satsuki breaks it to her that a lot has changed in the past six years. As time goes on, Asahi looks around but remembers nothing while in Purgatorio's lair. Because of that, Haruto suggests that they leave the premises. While they try to leave, Asahi detects a foreign presence and informs Haruto and Satsuki. When Haruto gets this info, he turns around and finds Alicia activating a portal. Seconds after she gets to the other side of the portal, Purgatorio heads out looking ready to attack. His presence shocks Satsuki the most because of the terrifying encounter she had with him in the past. At that moment, he aims his sword at the entrance and destroys it to prevent Satsuki and the others from escaping. This alone leaves them no choice but to face him. All three of them join forces together to land attacks on Purgatorio, but fail to deal enough damage to him. At some point, Satsuki rains down her elemental magic on him, but fails as she gets trapped by the enemy's magic. Even at that, Asahi maintains her stance and protects Purgatorio from harming Haruto. She succeeds to a point but then falls under the influence of Purgatorio's magic. On the other hand, Haruto, who lies weak at the time, tries to use his strength to get up and defend his teammates. He turns around and sees the ring that fell from his hand during his last battle with Purgatorio. The sight of the ring makes him recall the promise he made to Asahi, which entails that they will protect themselves. When he snaps out of it, he reaches out for the ring and wears it on his finger. After that, he gets on his feet and activates sense leaving Asahi relieved. At that moment, Haruto goes berserk on Purgatorio and defeats him, saving Satsuki and Asahi in the end. After Purgatorio is confirmed dead, Haruto heads out of the dungeon with Satsuki and Asahi. At the entrance, Asahi says something about uniting former members of Subaru. The issue with this is that Satsuki does not know how to get in contact with Clive and Nozomi. The only person who is reachable is Takanori. Haruto wishes that his former teammates will come back together, and Asahi encourages him saying that it is possible. On the other hand, Satsuki notices a red gem falling off Asahi's clothes. She then questions her about the gem, but it seems as if she does not recall how she got it. While Asahi stares at the gem, she becomes dizzy, but Satsuki and Haruto prevent her from falling to the ground. Instantly, they all see a blurry vision from Asahi's head, where Alicia and some other unidentified people are present. When the effects of Asahi's powers wear off, she assumes that what she saw is memories from the past six years. Even at that, Satsuki and Haruto are left shocked because of what they both saw in the vision. Later that day, Haruto questions Asahi about why she is so sure that vision was from the memory of the past six years. She then replies, saying that she isn't sure, but she just feels that way. They soon arrive at the building where Asahi sleeps at night. There, they meet a gathering of gamers, who murmur amongst themselves at the sight of them. Their behavior makes Asahi wonder why they are staring at her and her teammates. When she gets upstairs, Satsuki receives intel from her magic spy that the gamers were murmuring because they defeated Purgatorio. When Haruto gets the intel, he realizes that rumors about his team are spreading pretty fast. Asahi suggests that someone might be spreading the word, while Satsuki wonders who it is and why the person is doing such. Moving on, Ashi brings up the topic of connecting to their previous teammates again. Since Asahi knows a few informants, she decides that they all go out so she can get intel on Clive and Nozomi. On the way to visit the informant, they see some players running away from the direction they are headed. Out of curiosity, Satsuki stops one of them to find out what's up, and he replies saying that the Southern Cross Guild is around. The Southern Cross Guild is one of the top guilds in Reunion just like Subaru was in Union. For this reason, Satsuki postpones the journey to meet the informant to another day. On their way back, they get surrounded by the Southern Cross Guild headed by a warrior named Letos. Letos intends to get Asahi from Haruto and use her powers to benefit his guild. After he makes his intentions clear, Haruto shows signs of refusal, and as such he reminds him that he is surrounded by a thousand men. In the heat of the moment, Letos's men get surrounded by members of the Brill Society. Their leader Angelus tells Letos to stand down to avoid unnecessary fighting. He promises that he wants to speak to Haruto and his team, adding that he will leave them when he is done. On the other hand, Letos considers the offer and leaves the scene with his men to avoid violence. Seconds after he leaves, Angelus gets closer to Asahi Haruto and Satsuki, to make his intentions clear. There, he tells Haruto and his team to come under his protection, giving an excuse that he is not after their powers. His reason is that Asahi's presence distorts the world, and people who want more power will fight to get it. Another thing is that he guarantees Asahi's if she follows him. However, Asahi does not like the fact that Angelus is interested in her. She declares that Subaru still exists, and then adds that she does not want to follow Angelus. Shockingly, 
Angelus does not resort to violence because he believes that force is a distortion. He then leaves the scene threatening to kill us a he and her teammates if they ever disturb the balance in that world. Meanwhile, Alicia watches all that goes down from a distance and remains hidden. Later that day, at the Illuminati headquarters, Takanori receives intel that Southern Cross and Brill Society guilds are on the move on Asahi. His guild, Illuminati, is one of the top guilds in Reunion under his leadership. When his informant leaves his office, he wonders why the guilds are after Asahi. In the real world, Satsuki meets up with Haruto at a gaming store to shop for new hardware that will improve their gaming experience. For some reason, while in the store, Satsuki looks pissed and puts up an attitude. When Haruto is done buying stuff at the store, he asks Satsuki out for lunch, and she agrees. Later that afternoon, they both sit at a restaurant waiting to be served a meal. While waiting, Haruto reveals that he could not reach out to Clive. He believes Nozomi will not come over coupled with the fact that she attends a different school. At some point, they both get served but they finish their meal in a short time. Soon, a conversation begins between them and Haruto brings up Asahi. From the moment he starts talking about her, Satsuki's countenance changes, making her look somewhat pissed. She feels that Haruto wants to keep Asahi all to himself but Haritu does not want to regret acting careless like he did last time. The conflicting mindsets cause Satsuki to yell at Haruto in the restaurant, drawing the attention of others as a result. In turn, Haruto tries to calm things down in the restaurant, and then Satsuki leaves in a mood. The following day, Haruto joins Asahi and Satsuki in the game to investigate Asahi's vision they saw yesterday. The place that comes to Asahi's mind is the Tower of Heaven, which is the first place she activated the Prophet Art. In the meantime, Haruto notices that Satsuki is behaving quite weirdly and then questions her if something is up. As usual, she replies saying no and then tries to pretend as if she is following the conversation in the room. At midday, they arrive at the place called Tower of Heaven. There, they encounter monsters, but Haruto easily slays them. When they get to the highest room in the building, they see a large robot monster powering up to attack them. The monster manages to put up a fight, but Haruto deals damage to it. Satsuki supports on the side, but she soon falls under the influence of the enemy's magic, rendering her immobile. Haruto sees her condition and then charges angrily at the monster and defeats it by launching multiple fatal attacks on him. Even after Haruto defeats the monster, Satsuki gives off an attitude because she feels she is not needed in the battle. However, she apologizes, giving an excuse that she was a little careless in combat. A minute later, they all arrive at the top of the building, and Asahi is excited because she gets to view the sky from that height. At some point, she deploys her menu and sees a weird red gem there similar to the one that made her dizzy the previous day. The strange thing is that she does not recall picking up the gem. She raises the gem and looks at it in the sky trying to pinpoint what it is. Haruto tries to prevent her from viewing the gem for long, but fails because Takanori appears and uses magic to take the gem from her. Takanori's presence shocks Haruto, but Asahi on the other hand, wants her gem back. He refuses to hand the gem over because Asahi felt dizzy the last time she looked at it. The fact that he possesses this knowledge makes Haruto wonder how he found out. Another thing is that he tells Haruto that he does not deserve to be the one protecting Asahi. Haruto does not agree with him and is ready to resort to violence if need be. At that moment, Takanori activates a spell called Solitude, which encloses him and Haruto in a sphere, preventing others from interfering with their business. He intends to fight Haruto and looks pretty serious about it. A battle begins between both sides as Takanori launches an initial attack on Haruto. His attacks can easily nullify the effects of Haruto's powers giving him the upper hand in battle. Also, he is certain that Asahi is real because his divinity sense tells him so. The fact that he places reliance on his divinity sense upsets Haruto because there might be wrong in some scenarios. Another thing is that Takanori is willing to go to the extent of staying logged into the game if Asahi cannot log out. This alone shocks Haruto, but what concerns him is the fact that Takanori has no idea how Asahi feels. Because they both have contradicting ideas, their anger for each other grows more intense. As a result, both parties launch a powerful attack on themselves, which meets at a neutral point. In the heat of the moment, Satsuki dissolves Takanori's barrier, using her magic thus ending their battle in the process. On the other hand, Asahi holds a gun pointed at Takanori, threatening to shoot him if he hurts Haruto. Because of that, he relaxes his muscles and turns his back to leave. Before leaving, Asahi questions him about Clive and Nozomi, but he replies saying that he has no info on them. Haruto then suggests leaving the building, and Asahi agrees. Meanwhile, Satsuki reveals that she is going home, and then she logs out for the day. Later that day, Takanori converses with his informant in his office. During their conversation, he analyzes the intentions of the Brill Society and the Southern Cross Guild which is to obtain Asahi's powers. Because he seeks supremacy over the other top guilds, 
He wishes for an alliance with the Brill Society and the Southern Cross Guild to make it possible. At some point, one of Takanori's men badges into his office and drops info saying that Angelus and Letos are outside his building. Later that night, Satsuki wakes up from sleep after having a nightmare. The following day, Haruot and Asahi sit together in a room conversing with themselves. A topic about Satsuki comes up when Asahi states that she was behaving strangely the previous day. He wonders if her actions are a result of what he said to her in the past. Later that morning, he heads out with Asahi and meets a teleporter who then helps them arrive at a village. While in the village, they both meet a civilian and question her about Nozomi and Clive's whereabouts. Unfortunately, the woman has no information about the players, and she reveals this to Haruto and Asahi. That afternoon, Haruto and Asahi meet up with Satsuki when she logs into the game. Asahi, upon seeing her, notices that she does not look well, and as such, she asks why. Satsuki then replies, saying that she had a bad dream, but she is fine. She apologized for the way she behaved in the past, adding that she was overthinking things. As time goes on, they arrive on a different continent searching for Clive and Nozazmi. They charge through a place where thick fog makes visibility diminish gradually. At some point, Satsuki notices notices something off about the fog, and then realizes that it is a trap. Soon, Angelus appears at the scene and tells Satsuki to relax because she is not the one he is after. She stands alone, surrounded by Angelus's men, with Haruto and Asahi Emaya. On the other hand, Haruto notices that he is alone, only to find out that he is surrounded by Letos and his men. The fact that Haruto sees a member from the Brill Society amongst Letos's men makes him realize that both guilds have allied. Conversely, he finds out that he was teleported from his previous position, which explains why Asahi and Satsuki were not with him. At that moment, he finds out that the Illuminati, headed by Takanori, is in alliance with Letos and Angelus. Elsewhere, Angelus sends a message card to Satsuki containing a message from Takanori. She listens to the message and then finds out that Takanori knows what she wants. Satsuki wants Haruto to herself, but because of Asahi, she cannot fulfill her wish. Takanori proposes eliminating Haruto from the game so that she can have him by all means, because Asahi will not be around to ruin her plans. After she listens to the message, Angelus tells her to surrender. She thinks about the offer for some seconds, but hates the fact that she will have to concede to Takanori. In the meantime, a dagger aims for Angelus's arm and pierces him. Even at that, he orders his men to attack and eliminate Satsuki. Satsuki in turn activates her elemental magic, ready to defend herself from the enemies. Elsewhere, Haruto fights Letos and manages to deal some damage to him. Even though he has spent six years off the game, Letos acknowledges how strong he is, because he knows he cannot beat Haruto in combat. He capitalizes on the numbers of his men and uses them to threaten Haruto. Surprisingly, he proposes that Haruto join his team, but he refuses. Instead, Haruto attacks him, although he is surrounded. Amid the chaos, Elysia arrives at the scene and rains down arrows on Leidos and his men, which prevents them from using their powers at that moment. She then informs Haruto that Asahi is in danger, and they head off to go find her. Elsewhere, Asahi stands in front of Takanori questioning his intent. She only wants to restore Subaru and join her previous teammates together, like the way it used to be before. However, Takanori does not think that her wish can manifest because of how things have changed in the past six years. Soon, Takanori traps Asahi in a magic box and then gasses her up to make her fall asleep. While she lies unconscious, Takanori's men carry her body against his will. They then surround him with their weapons ready to fight him. However, only a select few side Takanori against the others. At that moment, Takanori finds out that he was played by Angelus, which explains why some of his men are brainwashed. Takanori tries as much as possible to prevent his brainwashed men from taking off with Asahi, but he fails in the end. Hours later, all gamers in that world receive a broadcast message from Letos and Angelus, saying that their guilds have allied. Also, they now possess the profit art, which will make them more powerful than ever. Another thing is that the allied guild is now called Divine, under the combined leadership of Letos and Angelus. Elsewhere, Haruto and Satsuki listen to this broadcast and find out that Takanori was betrayed. The fact that Asahi is in the hands of the enemy pisses Haruto off. As a result, he makes up his mind to take on the Divine Guild himself, even if it might cost him his life. He tells Satsuki not to join him because he feels that she is unsure about something. On his way out, he tells Satsuki to join Takanori and save Asahi if he fails. He feels that Takanori will be happy to help her if he is not around anymore, because of their unsettled beef. Later that day, Haruto appears before an army of the Divine Guild. The army consists of about 3,000 warriors, but Haruto does not look scared at their numbers. He then charges at them ferociously, 
with the mindset that he will eliminate all of them. Sometime in the past, Satsuki and the rest of her team fought against the monster that dwells in the Tower of Heaven. At that time, Asahi's Prophet Art activated for the first time, and she used it to make sure that her teammates won the battle against the monster. When the monster died, Haruto and the rest of the team praised Asahi for her contribution to the team. Meanwhile, Satsuki on the other hand felt bad that she does not get praised by her team when she puts up a good performance. Asahi noticed that she was in a bad mood and then tried to cheer her up with some words of encouragement. Satsuki feels as if Asahi is always keeping Haruto to herself. When she reveals this, Asahi smiles and then replies that she has been jealous of Satsuki. Her reason is that Satsuki gets to fight alongside Haruto in battle and defeat lots of monsters together. She always feels bad when Haruto says that Satsuki is amazing. Because of that, she wanted to have the power to help Haruto in battle too. She then tells Satsuki that they should work together since they are a team. At that moment, Satsuki was crying and she hugged Asahi as a sign of friendship. In the present, Satsuki reflects on this memory and then heads out to see Takanori. During the meeting, Takanori reveals that he needs to make preparations if he is going to be successful in winning both United Guilds. Satsuki calls him out on the fact that he is so calm, but he opposes her saying that he is not. He intends to rescue Asahi and hopes that everything goes according to his plan. At some point, Satsuki reveals that Haruto went to save Asahi alone. When he hears this, he smiles because Haruto's death will favor him. He intends to have Asahi all to himself if Haruto dies. Another thing is that Satsuki does not like the message Takanori sent to her in the past when she was against Angelus. She intends to help Haruto in battle against the Divine Guild. When she makes her intentions clear, Takanori reminds her that she will get what she wants if Haruto dies. Even at that, she does not change her mind, but rather gives Takanori reasons why she wants Haruto alive in the game. Elsewhere, Haruto bleeds after taking damage from one of Angelus's maids. Even after taking so much damage, he springs up and wipes out a bunch of enemy warriors in hundreds. Because he is exhausted, some enemy warrior manages to bind him within chains which restrict access to his fighting sense. They then try to land a fatal attack on Haruto, but Takanori arrives just in time to prevent Haruto from being eliminated. Satsuki arrives too, and they all form a united front against their common enemy. Before commencing the battle, Takanori reminds Haruto that he came to save Asahi and not him. Soon, they get surrounded by about 1,500 remaining warriors, but Haruto smiles because their numbers are not a problem. Seconds later, Takanori launches an initial attack on the warriors, while Haruto joins him from behind. They both launch a synchronized attack at the entrance of the guild and succeed in breaking it down. Meanwhile, Alicia and an unidentified individual watch all that goes down from a distance. Once Satsuki and her team get inside Angelus's domain, she detects the presence of a magic object that blocks her access to elemental magic. On the other side of the room, Angelus holds Asahi, feeling the extent of her powers. Takanori sees Asahi, who is unconscious at the time, and hates the condition she is in. Because of that, he charges at Angelus to save her. While at it, Angelus uses Asahi's powers to predict where Takanori will teleport to. At some point, he gets restrained by a magic rope, which restricts access to his magical powers. The fact that Angelus is using Asahi's powers pisses Satsuki and her other teammates off, Haruto gets fueled by rage and heads in to attack the enemy. Because Angelus has Asahi, Letos can predict when Haruto intends to strike, making their battle favor him. Meanwhile, Satsuki yells at Asahi trying to see if she will wake up. The first time she tries, she gets no result, but she continues again. Angelus tells her that what she is doing is of no use because he is the one controlling her. Despite that, Satsuki still intends to defile Angelus and because of that, she gets attacked by enemy mages. While on the ground, she wonders if she is going to lose again. She then recalls the time when Ashi consoled her when she felt unappreciated in her team. Also, because Asahi's powers are being used to hurt Haruto, she gets pissed and declares that she will not lose the battle. At that moment, the guild ring glows and she activates her elemental powers. This time around, she almost reaches the peak value of her magical powers, leaving the enemy warriors shocked. When she finishes charging up, she launches a single strike that eliminates the remaining warriors except Letos and Angelus. The way she does this shocks Letos and Angelus as they never expected that she would pull off something like that. For some reason, Angelus smiles even as he has no men to command. When Angelus asks him about their next move, he replies saying that he will use his last resort. At that moment, he summons a dark projection from thin air, 
and forcefully places it in Letos's abdomen. The dark projection, according to him, is the fear of 3,000 people that Letos defeated in the past. The amount of negative energy in Letos makes him change form into a more deadly being. After he completes his transformation, he attacks Haruto and Takanori, hoping to kill them. Asahi wakes up at some point and communicates with her teammates using telepathy. At the same time, a fragment of the red gem begins to float in the air. Takanori and Satsuki give Haruto a power boost, which helps him to defeat Letos easily. Satsuki heads over to meet Asahi, but Angelus tries to take her for himself. While at it, Takanori arrives and lands a punch on him, causing him to fall to the ground. Satsuki shows no mercy on him as she uses her powers to burn Angelus to dust. After his passing, Takanori hands over the fragment of the red gem. As Asahi receives it, she sees a blurry vision where some unidentified people try to experiment on her. When she snaps out of it, she finds out that Takanori and the rest of her team saw the vision too. Out of curiosity, Takanori asks about the vision, but Satsuki replies, saying that she has no idea what it is. Asahi tries to convince Takanori to join her, but he declines. He then turns over to Haruto and promises to face off with him when the time comes. In the end, he disappears, leaving Asahi frustrated. The following day, Satsuki plays with Asahi at a beach, using a water gun to shoot at themselves. Haruto, who is present at the time, becomes wet, despite not playing. Because of that, he takes the game seriously and uses his magic to blast Satsuki and Asahi with lots of water. Later that morning, they all set out on a ship heading for a place called the Lost Pentagon. The person in charge of the ship is none other than a lady who calls herself Alwida. While on the ship, Alwida reveals that the Lost Pentagon is quite dangerous. She then asks Haruto if he is looking for treasure. Haruto replies by saying that he is searching for a rumored unbreakable sword at the bottom of the sea in the Lost Pentagon. Alwida, upon hearing this, confirms the existence of the rumored sword. She reveals that she got the intel from someone who tried to get the sword. According to her, most players lose before they even get to the sword. Soon, they all arrive at the part of the sea called the Lost Pentagon. There, Haruto descends the ship with Asahi and Satsuki into a smaller boat so they can go further past their location. Before Haruto leaves, Alwida warns him not to overdo the mission if things get rough. In turn, Haruto tells her to retreat if her ship is in danger. At the bottom of the sea, Haruto notices that his health is reducing bit by bit. After some time in the sea, he signifies to his teammates that they should float back up. While in their mini boat, Asahi worries over the fact that the sword is hard to find. She then points in a direction, saying that she has a feeling that the sword is there. Although what she says sounds vague, Satsuki agrees to take a look. Haruto joins them too, and after some time, he sees the sword from a distance. When he gets closer to the sword, he finds out that it is the same sword he used back in Union. When he tries to pull the sword from the ground, an earthquake occurs that prevents him from doing so. The earthquake is a result of the King of the Dead Sea, Eger who rises when Haruto tries to pull the sword. He is a large monster in the form of a dragon, but with no wings. His presence terrifies Asahi and Satsuki because they never expected to see such a monster in the sea. Haruto, Asahi and Satsuki begin to attack the monster in the sea, even though they are at a big disadvantage. While at it, Egir knocks Haruto off using his tail. He then tries to consume Asahi, but Satsuki uses her magic to prevent it from happening. Soon Clive arrives in the sea and joins to fight the monster. His presence shocks Haruto the most, because he thought that he will not find him again. He then points upwards, signifying that Haruto and his teammates should meet him at the surface. When Haruto, Asahi, and Satsuki get to the boat, Haruto realizes that Clive did not join them. Still in the boat, they find a letter from Clive, which read, I have something to do, see you next time. After Satsuki reads the letter, she feels relieved because she thought that something happened to Clive. Sometime in the past, about six years ago, enemy guilds in Union ganged up against Subaru. This was because they defeated a monster that others couldn't. At that time, Clive declared that he was leaving the team because they could not win against the enemy guilds. His intentions shocked Takanori the most because he never thought that Clive would betray the team. Before Clive left the team, he joked about fighting against Subaru. In the present, Satsuki joins Haruto to see Takanori at his house in the real world. There, Takanori offers to handle their lunch, saying that they can order whatever they want. However, Satsuki takes advantage of the opportunity to order food of different types. The amount of food she orders shocks Haruto and Takanori. But what's more shocking is that she does not feel embarrassed. When she gets served the meals, she gulps them down one by one, as if it is nothing. Haruto and Takanori are stuck staring at her because of how fast she consumes each dish. When she is done eating, Takanori heads down to business as he reveals the reason for their meeting. The first thing that comes up is the fact that rumors concerning Asahi's appearance in the game spread quickly. Satsuki brings this up and Takanori affirms it. He adds that Gnosis Guild is the one responsible for pulling the strings behind the scenes. 
Gnosis is one of the high guilds that have been around since Union. When Satsuki hears that they are involved in Asai's case, she fumes off and looks shocked. Haruto recalls the guild and emphasizes that they are secretive and shady. According to Takanori, there was a guild that tried to find out what Gnosis's secret was. They all got erased from reunion, including their logs. Haruto, upon hearing this, looks shocked and he questions Takanori about the reason the guild went like that. Takanori replies saying that he checked on the eliminated players in the real world, but none of them told him anything. Because of that, he suspects that the Gnosis Guild, which exists in the virtual world, might influence reality. Out of curiosity, Haruto questions Takanori about Gnosis's relationship with Asahi, but he replies saying that he does not know. Another thing he says is that Southern Cross and Grill Society became allies because of Gnosis's secret work. He does not want Asahi to find out what is going on behind the scenes so that she does not feel bad. On the other hand, Satsuki reveals that she met Clive. This alone shocks Takanori because he tried and failed to find him. Satsuki also adds that she has not been able to get in touch with Clive since the last time she saw him. At some point, the conversation in the room heads to a point where Takanori speaks about the red gem that is with Asahi. He feels that the red gem is related to all that is going on. Satsuki thinks that it is related to the blurry visions that they saw earlier from Asahi's mind. According to Takanori, ever since he saw the visions, he came up with a hypothesis. The hypothesis entails that Asahi's body might exist in the real world. Takanori's reason for the hypothesis is that the visions from Asahi might be from the real world and not the virtual world. Minutes later, Takanori's butler arrives in the room and reveals that he has been able to find Nozomi. When he reveals this, Takanori fumes upset because Satsuki and Haruto are still around. When asked if he was searching for Nozomi, he gives an excuse saying that he was doing so for Asahi. The good news is that Nozomi has returned to the city. Later that day, Satsuki and Haruto log into the game and join Asahi on a trip back to the Lost Pentagon. While in the boat, they all converse with Alwida about their journey. At some point, Alwida gives off a weird reaction when she sees Clive on her ship. On the other hand, Asahi and the others cheer up when they see Clive because they have been meaning to get in touch with him. Minutes later, Clive displays an object that stops enemies from appearing. He reveals that he is after Eger too, and would like to help defeat him. He then aims the object into the water, and its power begins to take effect. While at the bottom of the sea, Clive and Satsuki use their magic to make movement easier in the water. When Aegir shows himself, they all form a united front to take him out. During the battle, Clive manages to drag part of Aegir's body out of the water while Satsuki uses her powers to freeze the area, rendering Aegir immobile. At that moment, Haruto gets on the monster and tries to pull his sword. While at it, Clive stabs him in the back and gives off a weird smile afterward. As Haruto falls unconscious to the ground, Asahui triggers her powers and yells at the top of her voice. Sometime in the past, at the time when Subaru Guild was running away from enemy guilds, Takanori told the team to lay low, or else they would get a game over. His reason was that the enemy guilds after them consisted of advanced players. Surprisingly, Clive found them and attacked them with a bunch of daggers. In the present, Haruto regains consciousness in the real world and finds himself lying in the hospital. He takes off his oxygen mask whilst wondering what is going on. Seconds later, Asahi enters the room with flowers and sees that Haruto is awake. She pauses for a second and tears begin to build up in her eyes. She then jumps and hugs Haruto excited about the fact that he has woken up. Later that day, Asahi tells Haruto that he has been asleep for six years. Haruto on the other hand looks confused, and then he wonders why he got a game over in Union. According to Asahi, Haruto protected Nozomi in their last quest, but took Purgatorio's attack. While she says this, Haruto recalls that it was Asahi who took Purgatorio's attack to save him. Later that day, Satsuki and Takanori arrive at the hospital to see Haruto. They both look excited that he is awake, but one odd thing is that they look clueless when Haruto asks them about the game reunion. That night, Haruto encounters issues sleeping, because he does not want to believe that the past six years have been a dream. Amid denial, Alicia appears to him and explains things to him. According to her, the current world that Haruto is in was created by the Prophet Art. Sense from Union can be used in reality, as well as in the game. Haruto upon hearing this looks shocked, but finds it hard to believe what Alicia said. On the other hand, Alicia gives a breakdown of Asahi's powers. Initially, it was rumored that the Prophet Art gave Asahi the ability to predict the future, but that is false. According to Alicia, the Prophet Art has the power to choose one out of an infinite number of possible outcomes. However, Asahi is not aware of this power. Haruto tries to wrap his head around the fact that powers in the game can be used in real life. He drowns in curiosity, but Alicia eases the tension, saying that there are still many unknowns about the potential of the human brain. She reveals that Union is an online game, but it is a training ground for using senses in the real world. 
She then contradicts herself, saying that union is a system that was constructed to be a laboratory to obtain the ultimate sense, which is the profit art. The people in pursuit of profit art are none other than the group, Gnosis. Haruto, upon hearing this, looks stunned, but he pays attention to the other information Elikai drops. In the end, Alicia vanishes, telling Haruto that he does not have much time. The following day, Asahi heads over to the hospital to see Haruto. There, she tries to exchange rings with Haruto, which signifies their promise to themselves. Haruto sees the ring and hesitates to take it. While staring at the ring, she reveals that he does not belong to that world. On the other hand, reality is observed glitching a little while Haruto speaks. In the end, he tries to take the ring from Asahi and then gets sent back to his original time. He arrives in the present, some seconds before Clive tries to stab him. There, he counters Clive easily because he knows his intent. Seconds later, Asahi and Satsuki arrive at the scene to check up on Haruto. Satsuki wonders what's up with Clive because it is unusual for him to want Haruto dead. On the other hand, Haruto sees through Clive and tells him to reveal his true self. To make this possible, he attacks Clive using his sense to break the magic he is using to shapeshift. In the end, Clive transforms into a warrior named Simon, from Gnosis, and it turns out that he was trying to deceive Haruto and the others to make them believe that he is the real Clive. Moving on, Haruto, Satsuki, and Asahi team up to take the imposter down. While at it, the imposter merges with Aegir in such a way that he assumes control of Aegir's body. After the merge, Aegir emits large magical projections at Haruto and the others, but Seitsuki manages to block the projections. However, the impact of the projections on her shield zapped a lot of energy from her. Aegir exploits this weak spot and sends more projectiles at Seitsuki and ends up destroying her shield. When the smoke clears out, Haruto races his heed only to find Satsuki restrained by the monster. Aegir threatens to kill Satsuki if Haruto moves a muskly. He tries to use a Satsuki as a trigger to make Asahi activate her powers. At some point, his plan works but fails when Alwida arrives at the scene. Alwida's entrance is quite amazing because she helps save Satsuki without breaking a sweat. Her presence catches the attention of Haruto and his team, but Haruto notices that something is off about her. Instantly, Alwida shapeshifts into the original Clive, leaving his old team mates shocked. He then teams up with Haruto, Satsuki, and Asahi to take down Ijir and the imposter, controlling him. On the other hand, Aegir projects lots of magic and prepares a powerful attack for his opponents. Haruto watches this from a distance and warms his teammates to move away because of how dangerous the attack is. He takes the full extent of the magical attack, leaving Aegir shocked. He admits that he never expected that Haruto would endure the attack. The downside is that Satsuki and Clive are nowhere to be found. Haruto fears that they are dead because they did not evade the premises in time. Ajir tries to use Satsuki's disappearance as a trigger point to make Asahi follow him since he believes that Clive is dead. Surprisingly, Clive arrives at the scene and shoots some daggers at Aegir, which deals some damage to him. Aegir looks shocked to see that Clive and Satsuki survived his attack moments ago. All thanks to Clive, who transformed his body and Satsuki's into lightning, and escaped the scene before Aegir dropped the magical attack. Satsuki and Asahi both use their powers to restrain Aegir for some moments, so that Haruto can take his weapon. When Haruto gets on top of Aegir, he tries to pull his weapon but experiences difficulties at first. When Asahi, Clive, and Satsuki send magical blasts at the weapon, he easily pulls it out from Aegir's head. After he pulls it out, he tries to use it to end Aegir. Back in the past, at the time when enemy guilds were after Subaru, Clive joined the enemy to make them think that he was against Subaru. Meanwhile, he used the opportunity to eliminate the guilds that were after his teammates. He then apologized to Takanori and the others for using them as bait, giving them a good reason why he had to. In the present, Asahi, Clive, and the others are on a boat heading back to their city. While on the way, Clive hands Asahi a piece of the red gem which he got from Aegir. When she takes it and views it, she sees a vision where Alicia infiltrates a lab and saves her from Gnosis. At that time, Alicia tried to lock her sense using her magic, but a red gem came out of Asahi's body and broke into pieces while in mid-air. In the present, Satsuki assumes that the gem fragment is a piece of the red gem that shattered in the vision. Later that day, Clive fights against Takanori to make him believe that he is real. In the end, Clive manages to cut through Takanori's defenses, proving that he is the real Clive. Moments later, Asahi and the others meet up inside the illuminated headquarters. There, Clive reveals that he got involved in reunion because of Alicia. According to him, he has been watching over his teammates with Alicia. On the other hand, Asahi and Satsuki get jealous and question Haruto about why he knows Alicia. They think that he has something to do with her behind their backs and has been shady about it. However, in Haruto's defense, he states that he has spoken to Alicia only a few times. Out of curiosity, Takanori questions Haruto about what he discusses with Alicia when they meet. In turn, 
Haruto gives a narration of all that happened when Simon stabbed him initially some hours ago. Takanori, after hearing what he says, tells Haruto that he will not believe Alicia's info unless he sees her for himself. This alone makes Haruto upset because Takanori thinks he is lying about Alicia. Because of that, Haruto enters into a heated argument with Takanori, but Stowski tries to separate them. Clive breaks the silence laughing about the fact that Takanori and Haruto have not changed. He then reveals that Gnosis is trying to awaken Asahi. To stop them, everyone in Subaru must awaken. Haruto, upon hearing this, recalls the conversation he had with Alicia when he was in the other universe. On the other hand, Satsuki brings up a topic about Nozomi's return. Takanori offers to give Haruto and Satsuki Nozomi's address so they can go there and see her without him. His reason for not joining is because he feels that Nozomi is scared of her. According to him, she is shy around him and might hesitate to log in if he is around. Satsuki upon hearing this realizes the true meaning of what Takanori says and then wonders why guys are so clueless when it comes to women. Later that day, in real life, Satsuki and Haruto head out to find Nozomi's house using the address that Takanori gave them. At some point, they find Nozomi who looks excited to see them. Moments later, all three of them sit at a restaurant where they eat lunch together. There, Nozomi gives a breakdown of what she has been doing in the past six years. According to her, she is an amateur model for a magazine. Haruto, upon hearing this, looks stunned by how far Nozomi has changed. However, Satsuki notices the look on her face when Haruto mentions that Takanori helped to find her. At some point, she joins Haruto to explain the concept of reunion to Nozomi, by saying that it is an extension of the game union. After that, Satsuki suggests that Nozomi join her and the others to play the game, but she declines saying that she does not play games anymore. Haruto insists, but she declines saying that she is keeping her distance from games. At this point, Satsuki interrupts her saying that Asahi is alive in reunion. At first, Nozomi thinks that Satsuki is joking, but then realizes that she is serious when Haruto begs her to log in. After lunch, she bids farewell to Haruto and Satsuki because she wants to go see a friend. She looks forward to seeing Takanori the next time Satsuki comes to visit. Later that day, Haruto displays some pictures of Nozomi at Subaru's base. There, Takanori and Clive observe the pictures and realize that Nozomi has changed a lot compared to the last time they saw her. On the other hand, Asahi looks forward to seeing her because it's been a while. An event notification comes up in the game, and Satsuki checks her device to see the details. The event is a dance party just like high school prom. That evening, Satsuki lies in her house thinking about the dance party event. She logs into the game after some minutes and tells Haruto to ask her out to the dance party event. Since Haruto hesitates to ask, she tells him that he can give her his reply the next day. After the meeting with Satsuki, Haruto logs out of the game and chills in his bedroom. Takanori sends him a message after some time, telling him to meet him at Asahi's grave. When he gets there, Takanori reveals that he wants to invite Asahi to the dance party. Haruto, after hearing this, replies, saying that he should do whatever he wants. Out of anger, Takanori punches Haruto in the face because he finds the reply annoying. He attacks Takanori, trying to take advantage of the fact that he is taller than him. He hates the fact that Haruto is still in the game, coupled with the fact that Asahi sacrificed herself to save him. At some point, Takanori slams Haruto to the ground and then reveals that he loves Asahi. His feelings for her grew from elementary, especially because of her smile. When Haruto gets up, he tries to punch him again, but this time, he misses. Haruto grabs his hand, saying that he also loves Asahi, and then lands a knockout punch on Takanori, making him fall to the ground. As Takanori gets up from the ground, he reveals that he quits his chasing Asahi. It turns out that he attacked Haruto earlier to make him say how he feels about Asahi. When Haruto leaves, he takes out Asahi's ring and buries it in Asahi's grave. The following day, in the evening, lots of gamers head to a large hall to attend the dance party with their partners. At the entrance, Satsuki stands alone in a pretty dress, wishing that Haruto comes and takes her to dance. Unfortunately, when Haruto arrives at the scene, he rejects her and heads into the hall to meet his partner. Although Satsuki is fine with his decision, she weeps in his absence. Seconds later, Takanori meets up with Satsuki and reveals that he was rejected by Asahi. He then asks Satsuki to be his partner, and she agrees because she does not want to be alone. While in the hall, Haruto looks for Asahi and finds her sitting by herself in a corner. He then asks her to be his partner, and she agrees. In excitement, she drags Haruto to the middle of the hall and dances with him carrying a big smile on her face. In real life, Nozomi sits alone in her room and recalls what Satsuki said to her about Takanori. She recalls a time in the past when Takanori helped her to clean her classroom. At that time, Satsuki and some other members of Subaru joined to help Nozomi, because it was not fair for her to clean the class alone. In the present, she logs into the game and appears in the hall where other gamers are dancing with their partners. 
She then looks for Takanori, only to find him dancing with Satsuki. In anger, she runs out of the hall regretting why she came to see Takanori. Unfortunately, she finds herself in another environment different from where she was. When she tries logging out of the game, two gamers from Gnosis, Serinthus, and Marcion head out of the shadows, welcoming her to their guild. Two days after the event party, Satsuki meets up with Haruto in real life. They both head to Nozomi's residence and on the way, Haruto tells Satsuki that Asahi was worried about her since she did not log in the previous day. Satsuki gives an excuse that she went out with her family. Meanwhile, the truth is that she cried her eyes out the previous day. The reason for her tears was that Haruto rejected her and went for Asahi. She then tells Haruto that she is fine with his move on Asahi, adding that he can come to her arms whenever Asahi rejects him. Upon getting to Nozomi's Nozomi's house, they meet Takanori there, who has been waiting for them for a while. There, he questions Satsuki about the info she has on Nozomi. According to Satsuki, she received a call from Nozomi's mum last, where she found out that Nozomi went missing. Moving on, Satsuki and the others speak with Nozomi's mum to find out details about Nozomi's disappearance. According to Nozomi's mum, Nozomi left her house the previous morning, but left her gaming equipment on her desk. Takanori gets the gaming equipment and scans it, only to find out that Nozomi logged into the game about two days ago. On the other hand, Satsuki looks stunned while recalling the things that went down about two days ago. There, she remembers that she danced with Takanori during the dance party event. Later that day, Clive hops on a video call with Satsuki, Takanori, and Haruto, to drop info on the investigation he ran on Nozomi. He drops the details of Nozomi's movement when she logged into the game two days ago. When Clive reveals that Nozomi went to the dance party, Satsuki expresses shock but calms down so she can listen to Clive. Meanwhile, Clive reveals that Nozazmi disappeared into the sky five minutes after she left the event hall. Another thing is that she is currently in reunion. This info shocks Takanori and the others, yet Haruto questions Clive about Nozomi's login location. Sadly, Clive has no info on that because he was not able to track Nozomi's IP address. The good thing is that he knows where she is in reunion, which is the Dungeon in the Heavens, otherwise known as the Dragon's Fortress. Later that evening, Satsuki and the others log into the game to find Nozomi at the said location. The mere sight of the Dragon's Fortress terrifies Haruto because of the way it looks. Takanori, who is present at the time, studies the fortress and concludes that it was created by the Dream World Sense. Some years in the past, Subaru took on a monster while they were on a quest. At that time, Asahi instructed her teammates on how and when to attack the monster. Everyone executed their part according to plan, but Haruto did not follow Asahi's instructions. The good thing was that Satsuki stopped the monster before it consumed Haruto and Nozomi. After the monster was confirmed dead, Asahi confronted Haruto on why he did not follow her orders. Haruto replied saying that he wanted to try something new. Asahi, after hearing this, became pissed and sought to end her friendship with Haruto. In the present, Satsuki and the others enter into a room in the fortress where they get attacked by Nozomi's familiars. However, they all manage to defeat the first set of familiars through combined team effort. When the smoke clears out, Nozomi laughs at them from a distance. When she finally reveals herself, Takanori finds it hard to believe that she is the one because of how much she has changed. Seconds later, Serinthus and Marcion appear at the scene and confirm that Nozomi is one of them. The fact that Nozomi is part of Gnosis shocks Haruto because he never expected Nozomi to do such. Even at that, he takes out his sword, declaring that he will take Nozomi back from Gnosis. A battle begins in the room as Clive and the others fight against Nozomi's familiars. At some point, Satsuki aims her magic at Marcion and shoots some projections at her. Marcion in turn absorbs the effect of Satsuki's magic, including Haruto's, without taking damage at all. She can do this because her sense allows her to. On the other hand, Nozomi deploys more familiars at Takanori and his teammates. When Asahi reveals that she wants to see her, she replies saying that she has nothing against her. Out of curiosity, Takanori questions Nozomi why she is attacking his team, but she replies saying that her heart has been let down. Even after hearing this, Takanori seems clueless about why Nozomi is attacking his team. Nozomi looks far gone because of how cold she acts towards her former teammates. She sends a small floating creature at Asahi that bites her in the neck. The bite causes Asahi to scream uncontrollably leaving her teammates shocked. Haruto tries to find out what's wrong, but for some reason, Asahi becomes hostile towards him. She then passes out on Haruto immediately after she is done yelling. Nozomi reveals that she made Asahi have a dream. Serinthus also drops info, saying that Asahi will meet her demise that night. After saying this, he disappears from the scene with Nozomi and Marcion. Nozomi's absence causes the fortress to crumble gradually, since her magic is no longer there. The good thing is that Satsuki was able to get her team out of the building before it was completely completely destroyed. Moving on, 
Satsuki heads back to base and meets Haruto conversing with Asahi. The fact that Asahi is awake relieves Satsuki because does not want her to die. Clive, who is present at the time, offers to look after Asahi when Haruto and Satsuki leave. When Haruto and Satsuki log out of the game, Clive offers to get Asahi some fish since she is hungry. As he leaves, the poison from the bite in Asahi's system spreads further. In real life, Takanori meets with Haruto and Satsuki, trying to decipher why Nozomi was pissed at him. Satsuki connects the dots and realizes that Nozomi is pissed because she danced with Takanori. She reveals that Nozomi saw her dancing with Takanori, and because of that, she ran away in shock. Satsuki goes on to explain that the reason Nozomi ran away was because she was in love with Takanori. After she drops this info, Takanori looks speechless for a few seconds, and then realizes that Gnosis took advantage of Nozomi's jealousy. He feels sorry for Nozomi because he is the reason she is like that. Shockingly, reality glitches, and they all find out that time has accelerated unusually. Also, an unidentified man appears behind Takanori saying some proverb about the time construct. The man's presence leaves Satsuki and the others shocked as they wonder who he is. From the way the man speaks, Takanori realizes that he is from Gnosis. When he is done talking, he vanishes, causing time to revert to how it was before he came. At this point, Haruto recalls the time when Alicia told him that senses from the Union can be used in reality as well as in the game. Some years ago, when Subaru fought against a large monster to complete a quest. Asahi instructed her teammates on how they would defeat the monster. However, when she was done, Haruto changed her plan by giving out new institutions. In the end, the team followed his instructions, and they defeated the monster. After that, Asahi entered into a heated conversation with Haruto, because he interfered with her plans. At some point, Asahi tells Haruto that she should go away because she does not want to see him anymore. After Haruto heard this, he drew his sword and pointed it at Asahi. In the present, members from the Illuminati Guild guard the entrance to the Subaru base where Asahi sleeps. Soon, Haruto logs into the game and meets up with Asahi to find out how she is doing. When Takanori and Satsuki arrive at the scene, Haruto questions Asahi if anything unusual happened. In turn, Asahi replies by saying no. As time goes on, Clive heads back from fishing, only to find out that Satsuki, Takanori, and Haruto had an encounter with a man from Gnosis in real life. When he learns that the man used his sense, he assumes that the man is the enemy Alicia was talking about. A meeting begins in the base where Clive tries to decipher a message Alicia passed to him about uniting his teammates. While at it, Ashi warns her teammates to evade the premises because she suspects an earthquake. Just before the lair crumbles, Takanori uses his powers to teleport everyone to safety. After escaping death, Satsuki turns around only to see a building that resembles the Tower of the White Water Spirit she cleared with her team six years ago. Clive sees the building from a distance and concludes that Nozomi created it. The whole team arrives at the building and at the entrance, Haruto uses his powers to scan for monsters. Because he senses no monster around, he proceeds up the tower with his team. On a higher level of the building, Asahi looms around and gets flashbacks of the time she had an issue with Haruto. Haruto notices something off about her and tries to find out what's up. In his attempt, Asahi fumes off telling her that she is fine. At some point, she activates her powers and gives out instructions to her team thinking that enemies are nearby. When she snaps out of it, Haruto suggests that they turn back because Asahi is not herself. Meanwhile, Asahi on the other hand, opposes Haruto and then runs off to go find Nozomi herself. At the top floor of the tower, Asahi gets another flashback, but this time it is a memory where Haruto drew his weapon at her. The good thing is that she snaps out of it when she hears Nozomi's voice. She tries to persuade Nozomi alongside Takanori to come back to Subaru, but she declines. Rather, she deploys her familiars and assumes a beast form. The form she takes makes Asahi wonder if she is truly Nozomi because she can barely recognize her. Despite that, Takanori vows to save her and return her to her real self. Corinthus and Marcion appear at the scene ready to eliminate Takanori and his team. Instantly, a battle begins between both sides as Nozomi launches the first attack. Asahi tries to use the profit art but fails. While wondering why she cannot use her powers, Nozomi speaks directly to her mind trying to make her feel like her team will not listen to her even if she uses her powers. Because of that, she yells trying to get Nozomi's voice out of her head. Meanwhile, Corinthus fires lots of projectiles at Takanori and the others hoping to kill them. Haruto protects Asahi from the blast, while Takanori does the same for Satsuki, by coincidence. Sadly, Nozomi gets the wrong impression when she sees Takanori protecting Satsuki. In anger, she accelerates instantly and tries to land a kill strike on Takanori, but she fails. She wishes that she never logged into the game on the night that she did. Takanori sees the pain in her eyes and feels bad for her. Because of that, he punches past a barrier, 
and takes her to a lower part of the tower so he can get through to her. When they land, Nozomi attacks Takanori, but he does not block or defend the attack. His reason is that he does not deserve to block or dodge her attacks. He then speaks of a time when they both got lost in a dungeon about six years ago. At that time, Nozomi apologized to Takanori because she thought it was her fault that they got lost. Takanori told her not to worry because the rest of the team would find them. Even at that, Nozomi feels like she holds her team back. She hoped to change from her timid lifestyle in the game, but it was not working out. Takanori, after hearing this, consoles her saying that telling her to be herself. In the present, Takanori reveals that he is the one who needs to take the advice he gave her in the past. While speaking, Nozomi feels bad, yet she attacks Takanori. The fact that Takanori does not block her attacks makes her feel bad about herself. At some point, Takanori gets close to Nozomi and apologizes to her for not noticing her feelings in the past. Nozomi reveals that she wanted Takanori to notice her in the past, but she failed in her efforts. When she says this, she weeps, but Takanori consoles her saying that it is not too late. He then draws her close to himself and hugs her using his powers to revert her to her normal form. After she changes back to her real self, she expresses shock because Asai is in trouble. Back at the highest floor of the tower, Asai shoots Haruto in the heart using her magical pistol. About 30 minutes in the past, when Takanori was alone with Nozomi, Corinthus, and Marcion attacked Asahi, Satsuki, and Haruto using their magic. While at it, Marcion mutters her intents as she reveals that Asahi is needed for their paradise. Haruto, upon hearing this, fumes upset and he vows to defeat her to protect Asahi. Clive, on the other hand, assumes an offensive position and makes multiple copies of himself to attack Serinthus. Meanwhile, the venom in Asahi's body is taking a toll on her. Clive succeeds in doing damage to Corinthus but fails when Marcion interrupts. When Haruto dives to land the kill strike on Serinthus, Asahi activates her powers and tells him to stop. Because of that, Haruto abandons his battle with Corinthus and heads over to see what's up with Asahi. When he gets to her, Asahi gets a flashback of a time when Haruto drew his sword at her. Because of that, she shoots him in the heart, leaving Satsuki and Clive shocked. When Haruto falls to the ground, Asahi tears up because she thinks that she shot Haruto in a dream. While she tries to get Haruto to wake up, her body begins to glow, making Marcion give off a weird smile. She smiles because the prophet art within Asahi will awaken very soon. Corinthus uses his magic to trap Asahi in a magical prism. In the meantime, Takanori and Nozomi try to get to the highest floor of the building as fast as possible. While on the way, she stops and apologizes to Takanori because she did something bad to Asahi. Takanori assures her that everything will be fine because they still have some time left. Back at Clive's position, Satsuki uses her powers to slow down the rate at which Haruto's life is draining. At the same time, Clive tries his best to protect her but then gets restrained by Corinthus. When Corinthus tries to eliminate him, Alicia arrives at the scene and releases him from bondage. Alicia's presence shocks Marcion and Corinthus because they never expected to see her. Soon, Asahi's powers get intense to the extent that she breaks Corinthus's hexahedral magical prism. Somewhere in space, Haruto's consciousness sees Asahi crying over his current condition. He walks up to her and then tells her to stop crying. Back in the past, at the time when Haruto drew his weapon at Asahi, he used it to kill the monster that was sleeping behind her because it was not completely dead. After that, he assured Asahi that he would get stronger and protect her from anything that tried to harm her. On the other hand, Asahi was shedding tears because she got the wrong impression from Haruto. In the present, Haruto regains consciousness and gets filled up with magical energy. He recalls the promise he made to Asahi and intends to keep it. Asahi looks normal at the time, and it turns out that her little meeting with Haruto in spirit paid off. The fact that Haruto is not more powerful than ever makes Corinthus and Marcion consider the option of running away. However, Takanori arrives at the scene with Nozomi promising to prevent them from escaping. They unite with their other comrades to take down Marcion and Serinthus with Haruto as leader. Seconds later, Marcion merges her magic with Gerinthus and conceals Haruto's team within a space armed with magical weapons. Satsuki especially looks terrified because she cannot think of any magic that can work against Marcion and Serinthus combined. Marcion gives the signal for Serinthus to fire the weapons, and he does as instructed. Meanwhile, Haruto goes berserk as he deploys an attack powerful enough to tear the fabric of Marcion's magic alongside Serinthus. In real life, the leader of Gnosis relaxes on his chair because he knows that Serinthus and Marcion have lost. Back in the game, Nozomi apologizes for what she did to her team. She feels bad for what she did, but even at that, Asahi hugs her. Her reason is that Nozomi is her real self, 
and she misses her. Nozomi hugs her back while tearing up because Asahi is alive and real. She then apologizes to Satsuki because she said some mean things to her in the past. Also, Satsuki and Asahi appreciate Alicia because she helped save her team. At some point, Alicia hands Haruto the sheath to his sword. The sight of the sheath shocks Clive and the others because they have not seen it in a long time. When he tries to get a reasonable explanation about the concept of the sheath, Alicia vanishes into thin air. Later that day, in the real world, Takanori finds Nozomi sleeping in a strange building. When he wakes her up, she looks stunned because Takanori found her as promised. In the end, Nozomi hugs Takanori and thanks him for what he did for her. The following day, Clive sits relieved in his dorm room when he gets info that Nozomi is safe. Later that evening, Haruto holds his ring and smiles, because Asahi managed to revive Subaru as promised. The following day, he logs into the game and meets up with some other members of Subaru. Asahi joins him at some point, and they all deliberate on what to do in the game as their first activity. While at it, Haruto senses Alicia's presence, yet smiles at her, even though he does not see her. In real life, Alicia smiles at a group photo of Subaru. Surprisingly, she is shown in the picture, and it appears that she might be part of Subaru. Back in the game, Haruto and other members of Subaru join hands together and re-declare their bond as a team like they did in the past.